Despite the suspicion of a cover-up, there are interesting contemporary Spanish records that still exist, but which few bother to take seriously. Take, for example, an anecdote written in 1526 by a Spanish colonist, soldier and chronicler called Gonzalo Fernández de Oviedo y Valdés. He recorded a widely circulated story in which a Spanish merchant caravel, piloted by Juan Alonso Sánchez of Huelva, was blown off course during a routine supply trip from the Canary Islands. The damaged ship ended up being blown into the challenging currents of the mid-Atlantic that saw it drift aimlessly for another month until it ran into, surprise, surprise, the island that would later come to be known as Hispaniola. The story goes that the crew were greeted by friendly naked inhabitants who treated them generously and after some time, having repaired their vessel, taken bearings and supplies, headed back home. But the trip took longer than their supplies held out and when they finally made it to Madeira, only five of the crew were still alive. Barely. Guess who was living in Porto Santo, Madeira, in the early 1480s, at the very time the stricken ship finally limped home? Our old mate, Chris Columbus. Apparently, he very generously took the ailing sailors into his own home to help them convalesce, making careful and extensive notes of their entire story, poring over their maps, ship's log, and positional calculations before the entire crew unfortunately expired from exhaustion and malnutrition. When Columbus began banging on about his own supposed discovery a decade or so later, Maderans who knew the truth were not impressed. Myth or not, what's clear is that for years, Columbus scoured ports up and down the coast of Europe for any scraps of information that could help him get to a place he already knew existed, even if he was ultimately wrong about what that place actually was. Consider Jean Cousin, a Norman-French navigator who claimed to have stumbled upon Brazil, near the mouth of the Amazon, four years before Columbus's celebrated voyage and 12 years before the celebrated Portuguese navigator Pedro Álvarez Cabral. Cabral made what can only be described as a highly suspicious beeline from Lisbon straight for the most eastward promontory on the supposedly unknown south in 1500. One of Cousin's captains, Spaniard Alonso Pinzon, having fallen out with him after their return to Dieppe in 1488, subsequently left for home joined Columbus's crew for the astonishing promise of a 50-50 split of the profits and, along with his two brothers, acted as chief advisor to Columbus and was appointed captain of the Pinta, guiding their journey westwards with an unsettling degree of confidence. It was the Pinta which first sighted land, surprise, surprise, and while Columbus's home trip saw his own ship blunder its way into unfriendly Portuguese Lisbon, Pinzon made it safely back to Spanish territory, sailors who clearly knew what they were doing. Columbus spat the dummy and publicly accused Pinzon of trying to steal both his glory and his treasure, so he threw a lot of shade at him and even barred his reception at the Spanish court, with Pinzon dying in relative obscurity soon after, probably of syphilis, one of the unintended gifts the Europeans brought back from booty time in the New World. 